Have you thought about vision training as a way to improve your sports performance? Do you know how vision impacts your sports performance? What can you do to train your eyes and your brain for maximal performance on the field? This video will review the basics of sports vision training and how training your brain and your eyes to work together will maximize your performance. Hello, I'm Dr. Labian, a sports vision ophthalmologist with 30 years experience working with professional, Olympic, and elite athletes. This channel is devoted to bringing what we've learned from them to you so we can improve and maximize your performance in your sport. In other videos on this channel, we reviewed how visual abilities, visual-based brain abilities, can impact your performance. We've also reviewed recent medical studies, which give us new insights into how vision and visually-based brain decisions and motor actions can improve your sports performance. If you haven't seen these videos already, please take a look at some of these down below. They'll explain some of the background to what we're gonna talk about today in terms of training, sports vision training to improve how you play. In the coming videos, we're gonna give detailed instructions on how you can use different systems, different techniques to maximize your vision and your visually based abilities. But to begin with, we have to talk about three basic principles that are involved and they're important to understand when we're discussing sports vision training. Timestamps for each of these things is below so that you can skip ahead or skip back if you need to, but each of the three is critical to your understanding. The first thing to appreciate is that different sports have different visual needs. In fact, many of the training systems that are out there now are designed to be used by everybody regardless of the sport, and that's not going to be the most efficient way to train your abilities. In a recent article that we discussed earlier on the channel, we'd summarize our experience with eight different sports in the U.S. Olympic team for one of the summer games recently in Beijing. In that report, we summarize the differences in visual ability between several different sports, sports that are very different, such as archery or softball or boxing or fencing, volleyball, all those different sports that are very different in terms of what the target is, how fast the target is moving, what kind of motor action you have to do to intersect that target and to be successful in your sport. Certainly, training the same for all of those sports just doesn't make sense. For example, archers need to have very sharp vision. Their target is far away. Their vision needs to be probably better than 2020 or at least 2020. But in fact, they don't need to have very good depth perception because their target is flat. If we contrast with the boxers, for example, boxers don't have to have sharp vision because their targets are right in front of them. But depth perception becomes critically important for them to be successful. So as you can see, these two different sports, archers versus boxers, have different visual needs. Similarly, fencers have different visual needs than softball athletes. Track and field athletes have different visual needs. Each sport has a set of requirements, a set of skills that must be perfected and optimized to perform at your best level. I'm often asked, what sport has the best vision? Well, that's a, that's a really tough question because as we just mentioned, all sports have different levels of vision. So there isn't any sport that has the best vision. In fact, what you want is the optimal vision for your participation in that particular sport. In fact, a sports vision training program or even a testing program really can't be the same for across the board for all sports. Any third party producers of equipment that are sold to different sports and different athletes across sports just isn't fully testing those people to what they need to perform. It doesn't make sense. For example, if you go to the doctor and every patient that comes in to see the doctor gets the same prescription of medication or the same eyeglasses prescription, it might work for one or two people, but it's certainly not gonna work for everybody. So why would we wanna test the same way for everybody or treat or train the same way for everybody. It needs to be individualized to the person, the athlete, and certainly to the sport in general. Secondly, we have to think about the difference between correcting visual abilities and enhancing visual abilities. Think about what's normal. Well, on this average person on the street, 20-20 vision is normal. And if you're a baseball player, normal vision is 20 over 12 in order to be successful at hitting a baseball. Well, if your vision on the street is 20, 30, 20, 40, that's not good enough, and you need to improve that with glasses at least at 20, 20, which is normal. If you're a baseball player, 20, 20 isn't the answer. The answer is 20, 12. And if you're less than 20, 12, you want to do your best to improve it to get you into the normal range of vision. That's different than thinking about someone who already has that 20, 20 vision or somebody who has 20, 12 vision in baseball, for example, and improving it further if it's possible. Do we think that there's a decreased rate of, say, car accidents if you're driving with 2020 or 2015 vision? I suspect there's no difference, that the factors that are involved in car accidents are outside of just sharpness of vision as long as you have the minimum required vision to drive successfully. Same thing in baseball. If your vision is 2012 and you want to improve to 2010, if we can do that with a pair of lenses uh, for each eye, then that's good. You'll see more sharply, but is that going to have any impact on your batting? I'm not so sure about that either. 
And so correction to normal versus enhancement from the normal to better is a distinction we want to make. And we certainly don't, if we're training something, we don't want to spend time training a task that you're already good at, you already have the normal ability at, just to make it better without evidence that that's going to do anything. I'd rather you spend your time doing that in other areas that have a better chance of improving your performance. And so whenever we're discussing a sports vision training program, we're always thinking about what the normal is for that sport, what the normal you need to perform well in that sport, and whether you're below that or at that or above that. That will tell us whether that's a function, that's a factor, that's a skill that we need to train or not. Let's think about another example. How about marathoners? Would you want the marathoner? Do you think it's good for a marathoner who has to be very thin, very light, very nimble, able to go long distances to spend a lot of time in the gym uh, getting good at bench pressing, maybe 200, 300 pounds of bench pressing, or getting very strong legs from heavy squats with, with a kettlebell? That doesn't sound like that's going to really help the marathoner win a marathon. If they're very muscle bound and they're very heavy, they're not going to be able to go the marathon distance successfully to win the race. But on the other hand, if they're a different athlete, let's say a lineman in football, that's something that could be very important to have the strength, to have the mass, to have the ability to perform their, their task successfully. So we really have to think about this idea of comparing, enhancing more than normal, being less than normal, and what's proper for each sport. The third item pertains to what exactly do you train? As we sort of hinted at already, what tasks you actually train become important, not just whether it's normal or less than normal or enhanced, actually what you train is important as well. For example, there are a lot of systems out there, a lot of people out there trying to sell training of the convergence system, the ability to move your eyes crossing inwards as something comes closer to you. Well, that's certainly a skill that's important. If you're reading, convergence is very important because you're looking at the book right in front of you. But in fact, most sports are played at a greater distance away. And there isn't much convergence need when you're playing sports. Think about it on a tennis court, think about it in a baseball diamond, think about it in a soccer pitch. Everything is happening quite a distance away from you, not anywhere near the point where you have to converge your eyes. So these systems that are being sold commercially or these training programs that doctors are putting together, uh, training convergence, or using a string with, with beads to get you to be able to jump back and forth, to converge and diverge, converge and diverge, move your eyes forward and back a short distance in front of you, really doesn't pertain too much to the sport, pretty much all sports that you're playing. Think about returning a serve from tennis. You need to be able to see the, the opponent, how he holds the racket, how he tosses the ball, how the face of the racket hits the ball, the initial movement of the ball. All of that's happening on the other side of the court where your eyes hopefully are perfectly straight looking at that ball, not at all pointed inwards uh, at something closer up. And so convergence training is a great example of some of these commercial systems that train, some of these programs that suggest training that simply don't have any relevance to the sport probably are a waste of time for the athlete and probably could time could be spent better to have better improvement and better function. So to conclude, let's put this all together. First of all, we have to make sure that the skills you're training are relevant to your sport. Secondly, we have to keep in mind the idea between enhancement and correction, where correction sounds pretty much important to, to have corrected so you're seeing as well as your peers are, your competitors are on the field. But enhancement, there is less information, there's less data, there's less connection between enhanced vision and performance on the court or on the field or in your sport. In fact, we did a recent review of papers and really couldn't find any of it convincingly, statistically, scientifically showed that by enhancing the visual function, you have better performance. There certainly are reports of differences between abilities and different performances, that's true. But that's correction, that's not enhancement. And thirdly, make sure that the skills that you're training, what you're trying to make better, are actually relevant to the sport you're playing. It doesn't make any sense to train something that you're not gonna be using in your sport to perform at your best. Please watch our channel in the next several weeks to see different systems and how they can be applied to your sport. Some of the systems might be applicable, some may not. We'll try to guide you to know which ones make sense and we'll try to explain why they make sense for you to spend your time and probably your money in, in buying those, those training systems so that you can get better in your sports. But we wanna be really careful about making sure that we do the things that make sense, not do the things that probably are a waste of time in order to make the most of what we invest in practice and training. Also, take a look at our blog. Our blog is at www.sportsvisionbydrlabby.com. In that blog, we have written text about similar items that we talk about in our videos. And that's something you could review on your own, highlight, do whatever you need to, to absorb the information. Because there's no question that a more educated athlete will be a more successful athlete. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel.
and click on the bell icon so you can be notified when we make new videos about training and other areas that are important for your success involving sports vision, how the eyes allow the brain to work more successfully, and how the eyes can direct the motor system, the arms and legs to work efficiently and right on time. Thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next videos.